following message is brought to you by Morning Star Christian Center, Worry. Pastor Christopher Orobo, Ministry. Let's praise the Lord. I believe that the Lord Jesus is here today to do somebody some good. Praise the Lord. Because everywhere he went, he was doing good. And he's here today to do us good in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn your Bibles with me. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Are you there? Luke chapter 18. We are going to study a passage from there i want us to start from verse 18 if you are in luke 18 say i am there now this is a story of a young man his encounter with the lord jesus christ what transpired between him and the lord jesus and i want us to look at it and find out how it affects us today in this generation and in verse 18 the word of God says, and a certain ruler asked him, was asking the Lord Jesus Christ. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He came to the Lord Jesus. This man is a ruler. He's a ruler of his people. He's a leader in his community. The Bible says he came to the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to where Jesus was teaching. And he asked the Lord Jesus Christ two things. Or one thing because he wanted something. He asked the Lord Jesus Christ what he must do. He said, Master, what shall I do? What do you want me to do? So that I can have eternal life. Well, as we are going to go on later you will discover that not only was this man a ruler he was also very very rich he was also very very wealthy and he came to jesus asking the master i said look he wanted eternal life and he wanted to know exactly what he should do to get it to have eternal life he wanted to do something so that he can have eternal life and before jesus answered his question jesus first of all corrected something in his life because he referred to the lord jesus christ as good master i am sure that he must have been hearing jesus teach he must have been hearing the word of the lord he must have known about what jesus stands for what he believes in and his teachings so when he came and he was asking good master jesus first of all corrected him said look you cannot come here and call me good master in fact jesus told him nobody is good that the only person that is good in the whole of the universe is god is god and why was it necessary for jesus to do that correction because many people have problem with the lord jesus christ they have problems with him they have problems with him because jesus said he is god they have problems with him because jesus said he is the savior of the world they have problems with him because jesus said no man can come unto the father except by me they have problems with him because jesus told them I am the door. Anyone who wants to enter the kingdom through any other means, the man is a thief and a robber. They have problem with him. So when he came and he was asking the Lord Jesus Christ, what do you want me to do? He was hoping that Jesus Christ was going to tell him to go and buy something or go to and pay something or to go and do something that is extraneous from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So Jesus now made him to know. He said, look, either you recognize me for who I am, 
or just forget the matter and i want us to please understand that jesus christ is christianity and christianity is jesus christ if we remove jesus we have nothing if jesus is not there nothing is there so when the man came to the lord jesus christ he's a ruler many a times when 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 people hear about the gospel of jesus christ when somebody say believe in the lord jesus and thou shall be saved sometimes people who think they have money they look at themselves they feel well they have money they feel they are rich some feel they are educated so they just don't see any reason why they needed jesus christ as though jesus christ is meant for the poor jesus is not meant for the poor because first and foremost he's not poor jesus is meant for everyone that is a human being whether you are rich whether you are poor whether you are short whether you are tall black white no matter provided you are a human being jesus christ is meant for you so this man came to jesus but people think that when you talk to them about jesus christ they look at themselves some don't see any reason why they need jesus because they feel that when you go and present jesus you are telling them well come and get rich or come and get healed or no this man is a ruler he's rich he came to the lord and he asked him what must i do to get eternal life now the man here desired eternal life he wanted eternal life and he has come to the lord jesus christ not to he didn't come to ask jesus to give him eternal life do you understand please follow me carefully he wasn't asking jesus for eternal life he was asking jesus to show him how to get eternal life those are two different things you know that jesus said that his life i am the life i'm the way the truth and the life jesus said that in john chapter 14 but this is what this man is having problem with if you read matthew mark luke and john the jewish people they have problem with the lord jesus christ they refuse to come down to his level they refuse to accept him and get saved they refuse to accept him and get delivered so this man he knew he he has been following jesus very carefully so when he came to him he didn't come to the lord jesus christ to receive him he came to the lord jesus christ to ask something from him i don't know why you come to church i don't know why you are in church there are several people who are in church they are not in church because they have received the lord jesus christ they are not in church because jesus is their lord and their master and they are his servant they are not in church because god has become their father and they have become the children of god and please don't make the mistake god created everybody yes but everybody are in the children of god because jesus said as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of god just as you were born every one of us here we have a birthday isn't it yes just as you were born into this world to become a child of god for god to become your father you must be born into his kingdom and to be born into the kingdom of god you must receive jesus as your lord and as your personal savior and that is what this man is looking for but he wants to pass through the window into the kingdom so he came he said master what must i do to have eternal life what must i do some other people had come to the lord jesus before in the book of john they came to him they said master which works tell us the works we can do to be saved tell us the things we can perform the activities we can be involved in so that we can be saved jesus said no this is the work of god 
They wanted to do the work of God. They were asking the Lord, tell us what we need to do to be able to do God's work. Please listen. Please listen. We sang a lot of songs this morning. And one of them says, everywhere Jesus went, what was he doing? He was doing good. That is the only thing he knows how to do. Good. They asked the Lord Jesus Christ, tell us, what do we do so that we can walk the works of God? Man is always looking for something to do. Even many of us who are in church, who have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, we are always looking for something to do so that God can do something. God does not have any other thing to do. God has done everything he wants to do. And everything he wants to do is Jesus Christ. He has nothing else to do for you. He has nothing else to do for me. Everything, anything that God needed to do, he has done it. And he has done it in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus told them, this is the work of God. It's amazing. In John, Jesus told them, this is the work of God. Believe on him whom he has sent. Just believe. Just believe. But you see, human beings are not satisfied with believing. They want to do something. And those people, they were offended. They said, who are you that we should believe in you? Are you better than our father Abraham? But they want to do the work of God. Jesus said, yes. If you want to do God's work, believe on him whom he has sent. And it's exactly what this man is doing here now. He has come. Because he has been hearing the teachings of Jesus. So listen. This man now came. He, he has been hearing of Jesus. So he wasn't ignorant at all. He knew. He knew who Jesus was. He knew what he was teaching. He has another understanding of his doctrine. Now that he has come, instead of saying, Master, I want to be saved. Uh -uh. He came. He said, I want you to tell me what I should do so that I can get eternal life. Verse 20. That knows the commandments. Did you see what Jesus said? Jesus said, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. If you read uh, the book of Matthew and Mark, you will discover that the word of God added that the man, uh, the man asked the Lord Jesus Christ, What is it that I am lacking? He told him, you see, he came, he wanted eternal life. He wanted eternal life. He wanted to know what he needed to do to get eternal life. Because he has refused eternal life himself, because Jesus is eternal life. Because he has refused to receive eternal life. He wanted to do something to get it. He just said, no problem. Since you want to do something to get it, these are the conditions. He said, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And he opened his mouth to tell the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, look, all these things I have done, all these things you are talking down, I have kept them from my youth up till now. But we will soon find out whether he really did. There are some of us, there are some of us, Though we are Christians, and there are many of us who are not even Christians yet. You are not even born again yet. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior yet. When you look around, you see some people that you are more righteous than. Even people who go to church, and you tell them, before this one we enter heaven, I think I will enter first. My friend, you may be standing on your self-righteousness, but your self-righteousness will not take you anywhere. Your self-righteousness can help you. 
your self-righteousness can't take you anywhere because the truth is that by the time you meet face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ you will discover that you are really not as self-righteous as you imagine so Jesus told him he said look you want eternal life that knows the commandments that simply means go and do the commandments go and do the commandments thou shall not commit adultery thou shall not kill thou shall not steal thou shall not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and he said all these have i kept from my youth now when jesus said these things he said unto him yet that lacks one thing thou lacks how many thing thou lacks how many thing that is to say only that one thing is enough for you to miss eternal life are you listening only one thing only one thing now look at what jesus said sell all that thou hast do what sell everything you have and distribute it unto the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven and do what and do what come and follow me and do what and come and follow me jesus said everything you have everything you have go and sell it go and sell it distribute it to the poor people and come and follow me was jesus joking when he said it was jesus christ joking when he said it and this is why now when the, the bible tells us here let's just read it first before we comment and when he heard this he was very sorrowful and when he heard this he was what he was what he was what why why what brought sorrow to him now what brought sorrow to him his wealth his wealth his wealth his wealth has certainly brought sorrow now if G this is someone who was claiming to love everybody this is the man who was claiming that he has kept all the commandments he forgot that the greatest of all the commandments the very greatest of all the commandments is that thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy might with all thy strength and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself now if this man actually has been keeping the commandments as he claimed he would have happily gone sold everything distributed it to the poor and done what and follow the lord jesus christ and the bible says when jesus said that he was filled with sorrow he was filled with sorrow my friend i want to ask you this morning what is keeping you away from following the lord jesus what is it that is keeping you from following Jesus? What is it that is holding you back from pursuing Jesus the way you know he's asking you to come? And for those of you, you have not even started, you have not even committed your life to him what is it that is keeping you back is it your wealth is it money that is keeping you from following jesus is it your position the position you are occupying in the society is that what is keeping you from following the lord jesus christ because this man he was a ruler and as far as he was concerned 
for Jesus to say, come and follow me. Come and follow me. Because Jesus hadn't told him to. Jesus said, forget everything, abandon everything, and you come and follow me. And that is how you will get eternal life. The man became so sorrowful. Gloom came upon his life. Sorrow came upon his life. Because he couldn't imagine how he was going to abandon his position as a ruler. He couldn't imagine how he could abandon all his wealth, all his riches, just to follow Jesus. As far as he's concerned, coming to follow Jesus is now, I'm, I, I will become a nobody, I will become a poor man, I will become wretched, I will now have nothing. How will I do this? Sorrow came upon him. Sorrow came upon him. My friend, what is keeping you away from following Jesus? Is it your position in the society? Or is it that you are ashamed because of the circle of friends you belong, that your friends will laugh at you? And there are even some of us who are already Christians who are refusing to go deeper inside God. Something is still keeping us from following Jesus the way we should follow him. You see this? this my friend, follow very well. If you look at the conditions Jesus gave to the man, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not be a false witness. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The man said, I have done all this one. Jesus said, fine, now sell everything you have. Come and follow me. Abandon your throne. Abandon that your rulership. And come and follow me. What is keeping you away from following the Lord Jesus Christ? What is it that is holding you back? You see, Jesus asked his question. He said, look, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? My friend, what is it in this world that you are pricing so high? It's so important to you. It's so valuable to you that you cannot let it go. That you have chosen to hold on to that and abandon eternal life. Let me inform you. The older you become in this world, the less appealing the things of this world come, becomes. The older you become, the less food you can eat. So, there are some of you Christians, it is food, your problem is food. If they, if they are not fasting in church, we are fasting today. Seven o'clock never reach. Only you don't chop half of ojile bread. You cannot fast. When you are finished eating, say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know that I'm weak. Your stomach. You cannot follow God. What is it that is a hindrance to your life? Today, you can put it down and turn to the Lord. Those of you who are not Christians, you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell me, the world you are inside, what exactly are you really enjoying? So you say, ah, uh, I can't leave this, I can't leave that, I can't leave this. What is it you are enjoying? That yes, this thing is so sweet. So I cannot leave it to follow Jesus. Let's listen to what Jesus said. And when Jesus saw that, Verse 24. And when Jesus saw that, he was very sorrowful. And he said, <laughs> it's amazing. These are the few places, this, this is one of the few places Jesus was sorrowful in all his life. And when Jesus saw that, he was what? He was what? And he said, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. 
for it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now listen carefully. Listen. The Bible says when Jesus saw the reaction of this man, Jesus became very sorrowful. He became very sad. He became very, very unhappy. And Jesus said, it's Jesus who said it. He said, how hard, how difficult. In fact, as far as Jesus is concerned, it is near impossible for rich people to become Christians. Now, in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, every city has fence. Every city, every community, they have fence. There's a big, they have fence and there are two doors. There's one big door that they can, anything can pass through. There's one big gate that anything can pass through. No matter how big or how high, can go through it. But once it is six o'clock, for security reasons, that big gate is normally locked. That was in the days of Jesus. Every city, they are walled. That was why the Bible was talking about the wall of Jericho. Then there is another small gate. That small gate, once it is 6 p.m., they lock the big gate and everybody must pass through that small gate. And that small gate, if your camel, because those days it is camel they used to carry load, just as we are using trailer these days to carry big, big load. It's camel they were using to carry their load. Camel cannot go through that small gate. Before a camel can go through that small gate, they must discharge almost all the load that the camel is carrying for the camel to be able to squeeze through. If you are not ready to discharge the load your camel is carrying, your camel and its load normally will now sleep outside the gate. And you will, you will now have to sleep outside the gate with it. Do you understand what I'm explaining? Do you understand now? So if you take that analogy, Jesus is simply saying that if you look at yourself that you are rich and you want to enter the kingdom, you must be ready to meet the necessary conditions that every other person is going to meet. God is not going to give you a different condition because you are rich. God is not going to give you a different condition because you are educated. God is not going to give you a different condition because you are very sensitive and delicate. No, it is the same condition that God has laid down. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You see, so today when people hear the gospel, when they hear the word of God, when you talk to them about the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. More often than not, the first thing they ask themselves, what do I need Jesus for? Do you understand? What do I need Jesus for? You remember when they were calling Philip? What did Philip say? He said, Can any, is there any good thing in that your Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of that place? This man went away sorrowful. Let's continue. Let's continue very quickly. Verse 28. Okay, verse 27. Okay, let's see the reaction of the disciples. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? Now, are you seeing how ridiculous these people are? They are saying, Who then can be saved? And though salvation is for the rich. Please, are you listening? You see verse 26, when the people heard what Jesus said, that it is near impossible for a rich man to be saved, they now ask a question. Who then can be saved as though you purchase salvation with your money? As though you purchase salvation with your wealth? Because in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, they, 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 they equate the favor of God with how rich you are. Please understand where these people are coming from. In the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, the richer you are, the more prosperous you are, the more they think that God is the one that is blessing you. That is why when Paul was writing to Timothy, Paul
Paul was telling Timothy, he said, hey, be careful and make sure that those people you are pastoring, teach them. Let them know that there are some people who are thinking that gain, G-A-I-N, is equivalent to godliness. But here, Jesus is teaching them that gain is not equivalent to godliness. That you have money in your pocket does not mean that you are a godly person. And please let me inform you too, that your pocket is empty doesn't make you godly either. Did I make myself clear? So don't say that those of you that are poor, you are the righteous people. No, it's not true. You see, I said those of you, I didn't say those of us because I'm not. <laughs> you know why? Because in Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, the Bible tells us, just as Jesus died to deliver us from our sin, he became poor so that through his poverty we can become rich. So a Christian that is poor, you are poor because you decided to be poor. Please follow me. Do you understand? But now we are talking about salvation. You don't buy salvation. You receive it. And that is what this man didn't want to do. Now, the man, the eternal life is standing before you. Instead of going to him and say, Master, give me eternal life. You went to him to say, Master, what must I do to get eternal life? If I, man said, okay, fine. Since you want to get eternal life without receiving it for free, this is the condition you meet. Now, when he had the condition to get eternal life, he discovered that it is not a condition he can meet. My friend, are you here today? I want you to know that you cannot purchase eternal life. And let me tell you that you need it. You need it. Because no matter how long you will live on this earth, you must die one day. True or false? And the word of God says that it is appointed unto man. How many times to die? And after that death, what next? Judgment. Judgment. You will face God one of these days. If you like, be deceived. Because you, have, you, are, you are a professor. If you like, be deceived because you have a PhD. And you have been taught and you have been deceived. That your great 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 grandfather was a baboon. You know? Now, is it not funny that human beings will rather believe that their great great grandfather is a baboon than believing that God created them? Which is more foolish? To believe that my great great grandfather was an animal eh? and, that, and that over time I became a human being and to believe that yes so somebody created me the way I am now which is better to be believed that you were once an animal but human beings believe that because they don't want to worship God they don't want to be accountable to him but the word of God says whether they believe it or not they will still be accountable. So let's see what now happened. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come. What is it? What is it? My friend, eternal life is following Jesus. Did you hear me? Eternal life. What did I say it is? It is following Jesus. Eternal life is following Jesus. And those of us who are already following him. 
follow him with the whole of your heart you will have no regret and those who are yet to commit their lives unto him i am asking you this morning that you need to commit your life to the lord jesus christ for eternal life must be received now to round up let's look at matthew chapter 7 i want to read from verse 21 Matthew 7 verse 21 Not everyone that saith unto me Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven Not everyone that saith unto me Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven Verse 24 Therefore Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And how did it fall? The great was the fall of it. Every one of us sitting down here this morning, we are building. In case you have not been told. You are building. Even if you have not bought a piece of land, and you have not laid a foundation of brick, of blocks and stones, you are building already. Since the day you were born into this world, you started to build as you were growing up. And Jesus is saying that anyone, any human being, he didn't remove anybody. Right from the presidency to the common man, everybody, every so long as you are a human being in this world, everybody we are building. And Jesus said that anyone who is not following him anybody any human being who is not following him anyone who is not listening to his words and following him and doing what is hearing him say and teach jesus said anyone that is doing it who is following him uh, that is like someone who is building his life who is building a building upon a rock upon a rock and anyone that is not following him yet anybody who is not following the lord jesus christ who is not following his teachings you hear his teachings you hear it you have been hearing it you have been hearing it and you are still hearing it now but you have not been following and you are not following jesus said that you are like a foolish person who is building his house on top of sand on top of sand that is to say there are two categories of human beings on earth the wise and the foolish the wise are not the most educated and the foolish are not the less educated are you listening you may be a professor you may have a phd you may have all the education in the world but so long as you are not following the teachings you are not following the lord jesus christ you are not a disciple jesus said you are a foolish person he said you are a foolish person why because the life you are building anything you think you are acquiring in this world whether wife whether children whether education whether money whether building whether political power whether economic and social power connection just gather it together jesus said that everything you think you are gathering all your life you are like someone that is building his house upon sand no foundation that is to say if the lord jesus christ is not in your life if jesus is not there solidly if the daily life you are living is if, if it is not founded on the lord jesus christ and it is not emanating from him jesus said your life is on the sand 
And that when the wind will come, when the storm will come, when it will beat upon it, that it will crumble. It will crumble. And he said that, and when it crumbles, it can never be gathered together. Why? Because in the first instance, there was no foundation. At this time, we are going to pray. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. There are two categories of people I have been talking to this morning. If you have never known the Lord Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for you to give your life to Him and start your life on a proper foundation. This is an opportunity to give your life to Him. Don't let the person sitting by you stop you or discourage you. Because the word of God says every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Everyone. Nobody is going to give account for another person. So long as you can be accountable for yourself. If you've not known Jesus, this morning is an opportunity for you to know him. You can know him today as a person, one on one. This message was brought to you by Morningstar Christian Center. Worry.